everybody, it's Johnny, and welcome to the video. This is part two of our series where we learn how to stream from our Mac. In part one, we got all the software and installed it. Today, we're gonna to be going through some of the settings in OBS that we need to change, and also to learn how to add things like sources and scenes to our videos. So stick around. If you're new here, please consider subscribing and make sure to enable that little bell notification to get notified of any new content that I put out. Thanks, and enjoy the video. So here we have OBS. This is what it looks like when you first open it up after installing it. You'll see pretty much a blank canvas, which is great because it allows you to build everything that you need to, to stream your games. So this piece here in the middle, the big black square is called your preview pane. This is where you'll see what things will look like as you build up your scenes, which are these things over here, and fill them full of sources, which are these things over here. Um, in the center here is your audio for um, your mic and your in-game audio. Over here is your transitions, so how you move from scene one to scene two to scene three and so on and so forth. And over here are your controls. The first thing we're gonna do is look at our settings. So when you click on the settings button, you get another window that pops up and it gives you a bunch of choices of things that you can change. Um, the ones that we're gonna really concentrate on here are stream, output, and video. So we're gonna start with the video. Now, if you're on a MacBook or any type of Mac laptop, you have a resolution of 1440 by 900 or some resolution that is a 16 by 10 resolution. Most everybody is gonna be viewing your gameplay in a 16 by nine resolution ratio or, you know, so like the 1080p or 720p or whatever it is, that's a 16 by nine. So you have a couple of choices. The first choice is you can leave things as they are. And, you know, with the scaling here to 1152 by 720, that will, when viewed on YouTube or Twitch or whatever platform, that platform will add the black bars on the outside. The other option is to do what I did, which is to change your canvas resolution to, or your base resolution to one of the um, appropriate 16 by nine resolutions. So I personally choose to use the 1920 by 1080. And the reason for that is that a lot of the overlays and such are built with a 1920 by 1080 resolution in mind. So it just becomes easier. You don't have to, you can do whatever you want and you know play around with it. The only thing you need to remember though is when you are making the changes here to your output resolution, that you don't attempt to scale it improperly. So you don't wanna go from a 16 by 10 resolution to an output of a 16 by nine, because what that'll do is stretch your image out and make it look pretty bad. So always keep the, the ratios the same between your base and your output. The output resolution is what your viewers are gonna see. Now you don't have to scale it down, you can leave it the same as your base. That's completely up to you and it really is dependent on your hardware. I scale it and the reason why I'm scaling it is because on my PS4, I can only get 720p resolution at 60 frames per second. Um, I don't have a PS4 Pro. Now, if you do have a PS4 Pro, then you'll be able to stream um, at the full 1080p. So again, depending on what you've got, will determine how you should use, uh, how you should set your output resolution. And frames per second, again, that's gonna depend on what you're using from your PS4 in the remote play. So I've set mine to 720, um, and 60 frames per second, so I'm gonna up mine to 60 frames per second. Again, just do what you need, on your, depending on your setup. So once we've set these things, the next thing we're gonna work on is our output. Right, so the first thing you have to look at is your streaming panel here, and it talks about your bit rate. Well, your bit rate is gonna be, it depends on two things. First off, it's your upload speed for your internet connection. Now, the, what this represents is how much of that bandwidth is gonna be used by OBS to stream. So let's say, for example, you have a 10 megabit per second upload speed. Well, this video bit rate here of 2,500, that equates to 2.5 megabits per second. 
so you have plenty of bandwidth to spare to stream at 2500. Um, the second thing that it depends on is the resolution at which you wish to stream. So the lower the resolution and the fewer frames per second, the less, the less bit rate you're going to need. So 2500 is a fine enough setting for 720 by 30, but if you are streaming at 60 frames per second, you're going to want to up this a little bit. Um, I personally use 4500, um, which is probably overkill. 3500 is more than enough to, to do a 720 by 60 frame per second stream. Um, but 2500 is a little bit low, and you might end up with um, stuttering and, and, and skipped frames in your stream. So a good compromise is usually around a, the 3000, the 3500 mark, um, or 4500. You know, de again, depending upon your your upload speed that you have in your internet connection. So I will change this to 3500. For encoder, you're going to use the software encoder. Um, just leave it as is, and that's your best choice here. It uses your CPUs to do the encoding. Audio bitrate you can leave as 160, it'll be fine. Next bit down here is your recording panel. The recording path is where any movies that you record are going to be saved. Um, I just have it in default as my movies uh, movies folder. Your recording quality, you can set this up differently. So for example, let's say you want to you know, record at 1080p but stream at 720, you can change that here. Um, and your recording format, you can use whatever you want. Um, you know, it, it defaults to FLV. I use the MOV. Um, the one I would not use and wouldn't recommend is MP4. And the reason why is that MP4, if for some reason OBS crashes in the middle of your stream or the middle of your recording rather, the MP4 file um, the container will be corrupted and you'll lose everything. Whereas with these other options like MKV and MOV and FLV, if OBS happens to crash during your recording, you won't lose everything. So you can go back in and, and you know in post start editing things together. I use MOV simply because it's Apple's, you know, and it works well with iMovie, which is what I use to edit. Okay, the final thing to look at here after video is your stream. And your streaming is where you're gonna set up to stream to whichever service you want. So, you know, you have Twitch, you have YouTube, Restream, Facebook, Mixer, all these guys here. We're going to set up Twitch. So, it needs a stream key, and your stream key is something you find on your Twitch account. So, if you launch, you launch Twitch, go over to your channel and launch your dashboard here. Go down to Settings and Channel. This is where you find your stream key. Now you don't want to share this with anybody. This is unique to you, um, which is why it's all you know blanked out here. Twitch does that by default. You can show it if you want. I'm not going to show mine. Um, but what you want to do here is you just copy this and bring it over and drop it into OBS. And that's it. So you will be able to stream. OK. So now you've got a blank scene. Then you've got all your settings ready to go. You could start streaming right now, just click the streaming, and as long as you've set everything up properly, you're gonna stream. Of course, it won't be very exciting because all you're gonna stream is a big black box. Nobody really wants to look at a big black box. So that's what these sources are. These sources are things that you can add to your stream. All right, well, what are the important things to add here? Well, our game, right? So let's add our game. So there's a couple of different ways you can add your gameplay here. Display capture, window capture, and of course, there's always the game capture. At least there's three choices, display capture, game capture, and window capture. Now, you might be tempted to use window capture, and so some of the other tutorials out there have suggested doing so, but I'm gonna show you why you don't wanna do that. All right, so let's pick window capture first. And I, choose which window you're going to see down here, you're going to see my PS4 remote remote play. That's the one we want to pick. Okay, so let's pick it. And there it is. So we can see our remote play window is now up and ready and it's a part of the scene. You click OK. So that looks pretty good so far, right? So why don't we want to use this? Well, let me show you. So I'm going to bring up my PS4 window here and then I'm going to move it a little bit to the side so we can see both 
OBS and the PS4, right? So here's my controller, I've got it plugged in. Um, so as I move my controller, you're gonna see a little bit of a delay, right? So, see that delay? That's not really pleasant, right? So you're always gonna be uh, a few hundred milliseconds behind, um, sometimes more, sometimes less. But it's, it's jarring, right? So your audio is gonna capture real time, but your video isn't. So everything's gonna be just a little bit off. And, and that's why we don't use window capture. Put my PS4 controller back down. So window capture's out. So what's our other, what's another option we can have? Well, we looked at game capture. Now, if you're using um, Mac OS Mojave, like I am, game capture doesn't work anymore. It used to work kind of for some games. Right, so if you're if you happen to be playing a game on your Mac directly, then you could potentially use what's called a siphon inject. You add a little bit of script that would allow it to, you know, allow OBS to sort of hook into the game and and capture it. Unfortunately, with Mojave, they've plugged that hole and it no longer works. Not really a choice that's available for us here. That leaves us our only other choice, which is the display capture. So if we add a new display capture, and we'll, add, we'll name this one called PS4, and click OK. So by default, it's gonna capture your screen, right? So if you have um, an external monitor, for example, you'll have more choices, right? I only have my MacBook, so the only choice I have is the MacBook's display, so display zero. Now for crop, we definitely want to crop because we don't want to capture our entire display. So what we're going to choose here is to window and manual. All right, so let's click to window and manual. And just like in the window capture, it gives you a choice of what window you want to crop to. Well, just like before, we're going to pick our PS4 remote play. So you click that. Now, if you want to show your cursor on this screen, you can. Um, I don't see a need to because nobody wants to see your mouse cursor while you're, while you're streaming. So you click that off and you click OK. Now when you look at this, you see, well, this really doesn't look that hot and you've got this sort of, you know, infinite inception kind of thing going on. That's normal, that's supposed to happen. So we are going to resize this window a bit here. And to move it around like I'm doing and resize it like I did, you just click on the little top circle here, you know, in the corner and click and drag it around and this will resize it as necessary. Now again, you can see I'm not really matched up, right? I still got the black bar on the side here. So to fix that, we are going to crop our window. And to do that, what we do is you go back to your little center dot here and you hold down your option key. When you hold down your option key and you click and drag, you see how that bar becomes green? This is allowing me to crop. So we do that. And then we're gonna go over to this side here and lock this off as well so we get as close to the you know, end of the screen as possible. On the bottom, we're gonna lock it off so we get to the, as close to the you know, aspect ratio, as, or sorry, as close to you know, the bottom of the gameplay as, as possible. And then finally, we'll drag our window over a little bit here. So on this side, we can see that edge of it as well. And then again, hold down the option key and drag your line over. So now that you've cropped everything, you just drag this up by holding, you know, clicking and holding in the center. And now we stretch this thing out to be the entire screen. And lo and behold, you've got yourself your gameplay. So I'm going to you know, bring this forward and you can see pretty clearly that this fills up your entire screen. Great. So you've got your first part of your scene done your game and oh by the way now if you notice and I'll move the PS4 window down a little bit notice how remember with the window capture we had that delay so if you look at me again I've got my PS4 controller and I'm moving it and there's absolutely no delay between the game and the window so that's the first piece of this now that we have our display and you notice that's a source in our scene what else do we need to do excuse me, here we need to capture our audio. So we're already capturing our, our commentary. So in your sources, click on the plus button and go to audio input capture. When you do this, you can 
leave it as audio input capture, but I like to name it to game audio, right? So game audio. And for the choices here, remember I show you, this is where you use it. So here you're gonna use the I show you audio capture device that you installed and set up in part from part one. Just choose that and click okay. Now your game audio is there. As you're moving this, you can see the game audio is picking things up. Right now you are ready to go and you can stream pretty much exactly the same as you would stream directly from your PS4. At this point, you're able to stream your game to Twitch. Congratulations. But let's make it better. So stick around and in part three, we're gonna talk about how to make it better so you can do things like add overlays like you see around me here adding text, adding images, um, scene transitions. So for example, you'll be able to go from you know, this scene here to perhaps um, you know, something like this. Stay tuned and check out part three when it comes up. Thanks for watching.